the same shirt? <laughs> Mine doesn't have horses. <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah. Good look. Very um, good color. I know that you you cannot hear this, but I was just like 50 seconds ago. I can I get I have uh, neighbors upstairs. And uh, I can like kind of faintly hear what they're listening to sometimes and they have really good taste and it's sometimes really great. And they were listening to Diver. No way. Like, literally like as I was like setting things up for this. <laughs> that is so sick. Isn't that? Whenever even, I mean, this is an amazing coincidence, but also whenever someone tells me they hear my music in public or like someone they don't know listening to or someone they know listening to, I'm like, what? <laughs> How? <laughs> How'd they get it? <laughs> oh man. I was like, I could not believe it. Cause I was like, you know, like listening to it too, obviously. But um and then I stopped to like set this up and uh do that. So how's it going? The magic is real. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Confirmed. <laughs> Um, it's going quite well. It's like, it's, you know, it's technically the first day of autumn and it's actually, Chicago was like, we're literally going to do it on the day. <laughs> oh my God. We're going to switch the weather today. Milwaukee did the same thing. I like woke up and all my windows were open and there was like a cool breeze blowing in. And I was like, wow, I am wearing a, you know, I switched hats. It's like, mm -hmm. I was like, wow, I guess we're, I guess we're just doing it. So. Exactly. Um, could well, you, we're transitioning to beanies. Yes, that it's 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 begun on the day that it shall begin. Uh, <laughs> could you introduce yourself? Yes, I am Lily West from the band La 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 La. Thank you. Um, uh, anytime. Why <laughs> do you say that anytime? We are uh, we're playing diver right now. And uh, I had, uh, I read an interview that I could not find, of course, again, um, uh, where you talked about, you had, you mentioned Sisyphus in the song and mm -hmm. uh, you had mentioned something about like falling in love with the process of mm -hmm. Sisyphus. Do you, do you remember that? And could you recall it? Yeah, definitely. I'm talking about how, like comparing being a human and like making the same mistakes over and over again is, is embodying Sisyphus, but like the key, if you will, to opening the door is falling in love with the rock, which is the labor of, of making the mistakes, of becoming a better person, of growing. Um, so yeah, fall in love with the rock. That's my my new mantra, if you will. I think that really, like I, I read that and I uh, I think like, it really stuck with me. I have like been really like thinking of it outside of like, I was just like driving the other day and that like idea popped into my head. And, uh, and yesterday at work was just like a bad day. And I was like, you have to, this is it. This is, this is every day. And I think like, I, I took that to heart and I, I think it's like a important message. I think it's really good. So thank you for that. No problem. Yeah. It's just because I, I mean, in my experience where pain lives is resistance. Mm. Um, so whenever something unpleasant is happening in my life or to me in air quotes, um, I just, I just try and accept I'm like, this is horrible. Accept it. It's happening. <laughs> you can't, you can't change it. It's happening. Accept, accept, accept. Fall in love with the rock. I also took that a bit to mean like fall in love with like fall in love with the process mm -hmm. and of doing it. And uh, I felt like at least in, uh, you know, in the making of, from what I've heard from, I want the door to open. Um, I was like, I can hear you falling in love with that rock because this is a project that is involved. The, the songs have a ton of stuff in there. I mean, it is, uh, it's, it's a really um, detailed album uh, musically. It was that, 
is that uh is that a bit of falling in love with the rock too and falling in love with that process adding more yeah i mean i think in general my instinct is to rush things in mm-hmm. life in music and everything and uh it's a cliche but life is actually the journey you know it's not it's not the product so i really like took my time and uh made sure i was sort of caring for the record like uh listening to what the songs wanted even if it was hard you know even if it was something that i couldn't do personally or if it meant starting a song over and delaying the record or whatever you know it's just like well this is what i have to do to enjoy because that is what making music is you know like making music is not the finished record it's actually making the record um so yeah definitely definitely a part of it what was uh what's an example of you doing that in this record color the pool is a song that i started writing like five years ago and i've made maybe 35 different versions and I felt like it had to be on this record or it was going to be lost forever. It just fit with everything else and uh, thematically and everything. I did end up rewriting the lyrics for the record, but um, we had a totally different version. And I was on the like final trip to Cincinnati uh, with Yoni working on it. And I, uh, (laughs) it was was an emotional trip in general. I just started crying. I was like, I hate it. I just hate it. It's not right. We have to start over. It was like the second to last day that I was there in the studio. Um, and that, I mean, yeah, I was like, I'll delay the, the whole record for this song. It has to be perfect. And we ended up actually do, we ended up making pretty much the whole thing that day, just from a loop from my pocket piano. And uh, I had Yoni leave the room. I had him leave me with this like mini DX7 synth I had. And just, I was like, leave the room, put the song on loop and made the the bass synth thing and and Yoni did the claps but yeah I felt like I was taking a little bit of a risk because I could have put the existing version on and just settled for it but I, I refused. How do you know when it's right? Is it like do you know when it's right when it is like reflects the original idea that you had or with like how do you know when it you know if uh and if version number 32 or 35 is the right one? I don't know. I mean, it's, I think it's different song to song. You know, there's like some demos that are really important to me. Like Bliss Now, the song on the record is pretty much exactly the same as the demo. It was like really important to me that the essence of the demo was there, but other songs, not so much at all. And other songs, it's like Diver, I could have worked on that song for six more months or something. Like I could have made it, uh, maybe I will make more versions. <laughs> I'm not sure that that's done. Um, but Color of the Pool, it just told me. It just it just felt so right, finally. You know, it was like struggling for years. Yeah. And it just told me. Um, I, I, I love Diver. I love those little background vocals in there. I love like every little tiny piece that like comes into that song. I think is really great. Thank you. It was we really wrestled with it up until yeah. the very last second. What what um what were you wrestling with? I mean, more than anything, I just wanted it to be extremely dense, which is the opposite of what I usually want. Like, Color of the Pool yeah. has like three instruments, you know. Um, yeah. It is dense. It's dense, it, but it's yeah. not too much, you know. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Um, it was hard just controlling all those things, you know. It was like a classic mixing, wanting everything louder than everything else, you know. It's like yeah. Trumpets up. Well, now the same guys are going up. Can't hear the bass anymore. And we sent it to uh, Heba, the mastering engineer, and she sent it back. And we were like, honestly, I think we have to remix it. It's too harsh. Um, so, yeah, we, I mean, she was going out of town. We, we had like a five day window to work with her. And I think we sent it, the final version to her like Sunday, 10 p.m., before she started working at, on Monday. I think you nailed it because things come in like subtly and I feel like the more that I hear it, the more I pick up on, which is like, it's good. It's not like all in your face. Um, I am like, how the hell are you going to perform that? Oh, wow. <laughs> we, I, I was just making jokes about us. There's only four of us and we're like literally yeah. all playing like 18 instruments. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, you'll have to wait and see. That's true. That's true. That's great. Um, 
you you made a you made a phone number for this uh as part of this um what's the idea there um what are you getting out of that i just want to engage with people you know especially after covid and being so isolated like i feel like usually how i engage with people with my music is performing and you know being at the merch table and hanging out and talking which is obviously completely impossible and i just wanted this I really wanted this record to be very immersive in general, like sonically and conceptually and also the rollout. I just wanted it to be fun. Like I, I, yeah, I just wanted to try really hard for it to be fun for everyone um, and not just be a standard rollout. But the, the, the phone number was just a fun way to preview the new singles. Like there's a new preview on there now. Um, and I, something I didn't anticipate is the voicemails that people have been leaving. I have like hundreds of voicemails and it's, it's absolutely incredible. I'm obsessed with them. They're so yeah. fun and funny. Can you give uh, me one memorable one right now? The first one that comes to your mind? Oh, well, I just got one this morning where someone was professing their true love for me. <laughs> <laughs> that's not, that's not like my favorite one. That just happened to be the one I got this morning. Um, I, you know, actually, it, they've, the ones that are really intimate are the ones that are the most special to me. Like people just telling me what they did with their day or like how they found out about my music or someone I know left me a voicemail that I don't know very well, but I do know left me a really kind voicemail. Um, or someone, someone left me a voicemail where they're lying on their back with the phone on their stomach and they're like describing their room uh it was really special just it's so special to get all these like little views into people's lives and what they want to communicate to me also someone said I love the ones that say you're never gonna listen to this like there's no way you're listening to this and I'm like here I am (laughs) (laughs) are you gonna do anything with them or or is is there any is there a chance where you're like (laughs) clapping back or or what are they going on to your next rap tape Possibly, I am gonna sample them. I have, I just actually this morning uh, started working on something, but I don't know if that'll be on the next record or if I'll make, I might make a special voicemail, like Bandcamp only record or something. That's cool. I like, I mean, I'm in radio. That is like, to me, that is because it's the most intimate form. It's, It's like someone speaking directly into your ear. And not only is it the most intimate, it is the most imaginative, Mm -hmm. which is my favorite thing. It's like, you don't know what this person looks like. And that is, to me, that's the beauty of it, you know, is it's romantic, you know, because your mind puts in so many of those pieces. Yeah. It's very, it's like reading, but more intimate. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) It's their voice and not that voice in your head. Not my stupid voice. (laughs) Right. (laughs) Um, well, I was going to ask you what the key to the door is, but we kind of hit that immediately. That there's no key? <laughs> that there is no key. I thought the rock was the key. In some ways, the rock is the key, but in some ways, I think the door never opens. Mm. <laughs> but you have to keep trying to open it or, or you become stagnant, you know. Or you open become... a door to another door to another door. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, I get that. Um, well, what, um, I love to come out, uh, of this and go into a song and like one of my favorite things is like interviewing people that we have like on air and you'll like, you hear, we hear Diver every day. And then it is you talking about a different song that you like, that is not one of yours or just something you've been listening to. Um, so what is a song that you have been listening to a lot recently? Um, this is fun. I like this. <laughs> um, I've been listening to uh, Dig by Barry a lot. Have you heard this yet? I am. I know those words, but I <laughs> don't know, you know, um, it's like it's my job. So I'm like, I have seen, I'm sure I got an email with those two, with those words together. But um what what does it sound like and why have you been listening to it um i 
I think it's really special the way, I mean, she wrote something about uh, the way she recorded it, which was she was in her parents' house, like freaking out and she's sort of sing singing as loud as she could and clapping and walking around in a circle. And I feel like you can really hear that. Like you feel like you're in the room cool. with her. And um, I just think the production is unique. You know, she's kind of in indie rock, but uh, it's not very straightforward at all. And the, um, the repeating chorus lyric is, I can't get enough of her, where did you come from? Over and over again, like sort of chanted. And I just think it's really romantic. It's really beautiful. That's great. I can't wait to listen to it. It's really cool. Um, that's great. I think that's it. Um, that's the whole interview. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> um, Thanks for making the new record. I mean, I saw you when you, you came and opened for someone in Milwaukee and I went to that show and uh, then I bought the lamb after that. And I was like, then I was just in love with that. And I wonder who it was. It was in the background of Colectivo. I think it was. Oh, I think we, that was our headlining show. <laughs> was it? Yeah. I think we said Morimoto open for us. Oh, maybe that was probably it. Yeah. Oh wait, Girlpool. We played there with Girlpool uh, years ago. We opened for Girlpool there. That was probably it. And Avery had just got his wisdom teeth emergency removed in the middle of a tour and had dry sockets and was like screaming in the bathroom. I felt so bad for him. It was so awful. <laughs> I know. I was like, go home, dude. <laughs> yeah. Dry sockets. Oh, no. Um, well, thank you. Thanks for talking. And no problem. Uh, Thanks for having me.